Hi everyone, and welcome to today's video, where we'll be doing an EU4 tier list that focuses on the Japanese nations known as daimyos, and a few other nations in the Japanese region. In this tier list, we'll be ranking all these nations based on national ideas, starting position, promises, armies, and more. Before we begin, consider leaving a like and subscribing if you enjoyed this video. Only 10% of you are subscribed, so it would really mean a lot. Let's get started. F tier. We start off with F tier. Now, these nations aren't daimyos, but they are present in the region of Japan, so I figured I would mention them briefly anyways. That's why they're in the F tier. Ainu. Ainu is one of the weakest nations on this list anyways. It starts as a tribe in the far north region of the Japanese islands. Its national ideas aren't too bad, but it does also start as an animus, while all the other Japanese nations are Shinto. Your only real path for expansion would be into Yeren, but even that's tough. Ryuku We all know Ryuku, probably due to the Three Mountain achievement, which requires you to conquer the world as Ryuku. It's one of the hardest achievements in the game. Ryuku starts off on an island with almost no opportunities for expansion. So, you have to get creative here. Ryuku's ideas are also pretty mediocre. The only thing you have going for you is that you were tributary of Ming. Not that anyone will attack you anyways. E tier. Now those two are out the way, we got to E tier. This is the first tier with real daimyos, except these don't exist in 1444, so you would realistically never play as them. Let's go over them quickly. Akamatsu. Akamatsu is a daimyo in Western Japan. It does not exist in 1444 start date, but may be released normally or via a special event if the shogunate comes to control in province of Harima. They are also present after 1466 start date. Asakura Asakura is a daimyo in central Japan. It does not exist in the 1444 start date, but may be released normally. It appears after the 1471 start date. Chosokabi Chosokabi is a daimyo in western Japan. It does not exist in the 1444 start, but may be released normally or via special event if the shogunate comes to control the province of Tosa. It appears after the 1549 start date. Hojo Hojo is a nation that does not exist and has no cores in 1444. It can be released as a vassal if Shogun owns the province of Musashi. Otherwise, it appears between the 1493 and 1590 start dates. Aikida Aikida doesn't exist in the 1444 start date and also doesn't have any cores. I have no information if it can appear by event. Otherwise, it's playable from the 1590 start date. Maeda Maeda, just like Aikida, doesn't exist in 1444 and doesn't have any cores. There's also no information about it, but you can play it after the 1583 start date. Morai Morai is a final nation this tier. It doesn't exist in 1444 and it appears after the 1525 start date. It's the primary nation to Saigoku culture. D tier. This is where we get into real daimyos that actually exist in 1444. Although, obviously, with them being in D tier, I consider them to be weakest. Kitabatake. We start this list off with Kitabatake. They are a one province nation with 2k troops and 5 ships. The reason I consider it the weakest is because it's surrounded by the stronger neighbors like Oda, Tokugawa, Ashikaga, Hatakaima, and Toki, which has a level 3 fort. Its very weak national ideas and limited expansion opportunities make it the weakest daimyo in 1444. Kichuki. Next are the daimyo of Kichuki, another nation with 2k troops and 5 ships. It does have a slightly better expansion opportunities than Kitabatake, but its weak national ideas are what's holding it back. The only real benefits they have is being positioned at the far end of Japan. So when you expand, at least you won't have to watch your back. Ishiki Ishiki is the next nation on this list, and it finds itself sandwiched between Yamana, Hosokawa, Ashikaga, and Shiba, all much stronger nations. The only nation you could realistically beat is Amago, but even then, you have a hard time due to your military weak national ideas. Look elsewhere if you want to have more fun. Usunomaya 
Next, we have the first landlocked nation in this tier. A real rarity when playing in Japan. Usunomaya has a start army of 3k, and of course, no ships. It does have easier expansion routes than the previous daimyos I mentioned, but its horrible idea set won't help you anytime soon. Pick another nation if you want to play in North Japan. Chiba. Now we move on to Chiba, not to be confused with Shiba. Chiba is another OPM that starts 2k troops and 5 ships. You do have some options for expansion, but you are also held back by your weak national ideas and poor 5 development, fish producing province. At least their map color is pretty cool. Oga Sarara. We move back to another landlocked daimyo for Oga Sarara. It has 2k troops at the start but limited chances for expansion due to all level 3 forts that surround it. You will have a slightly easier time expanding due to plus 10% armor morale, starting traditions. But after that, their ideas aren't anything special. Shoni. Moving back down south, we have the Daimyo of Shoni. It has 3k troops and 6 ships. A decent upgrade, all things considered. Its national ideas are mostly trade and diplomacy focus. But the starting tradition of plus 20% land force limit will help you get one more infantry stack before paying a penalty. Expansion might be limited by Uchi, but if you do manage to overcome them, you can slowly start expanding from the south. Nanbu. Moving from the far south to the far north with the daimyo of Nanbu, it starts with 2k troops and 5 ships, and all of its neighbors are stronger. You have to get some good allies in order to grow. Its traditions of 5% discipline might seem good, but doesn't matter much in the early game where morale is king. Ito. Ito is another nation in the south of Japan, another weak one too. Its national ideas aren't very good, and most of the neighbors have better ones. If you do manage to take over the other daimyos, you will soon be blocked by the other nation's surviving navies. There are better options. Kono. Kono is the strongest nation in the tier, if it can be considered strong at all. Its national ideas are very exclusively focused on navy and slightly on trade, and it does own a proper producing province. You will still have a hard time expanding due to stronger neighbors. The reason it's not in a higher tier is a lack of even one military national idea. C tier. This is the tier where stronger nations start appearing. You will be able to unite Japan with these daimyos, but have a harder time doing it, and the national ideas aren't worth keeping when you do. Let's see which ones they are. Imagawa. We start off this tier with Imagawa, another OPM with 3k troops and 5 ships. Imagawa is a pretty decent nation when you consider their starting traditions of plus 20% land force limit and 5% discipline. But after that, their ideas aren't that good. What's really holding them back is a stronger neighbors. Date. Date is a similar situation as Imagawa. Although its ideas are slightly better, you have a slightly difficult time in expanding. But after that, you can move straight down south while having to worry about the nations up north that you've conquered first. Tsutsi. Tsutsi is the first landlocked daimyo in this tier. It has some decent national ideas too. What puts it in this tier is its inability to expand right off the bat, due to three out of its four neighbors being much stronger than they are. And one of them is Ashikaga too. Sure, you'll conquer Kitabake quickly, but after that, you will struggle and might have to wait for favorable alliances. Otomo. Otomo is a daimyo in the far south of Japan. This region is pretty balanced with some neighbors being stronger and some weaker. Otomo has a mix of military and economy focused national ideas. You can say that Otomo is literally the most average daimyo in Japan. For that reason, it's almost literally in the middle of this tier list. I would actually recommend playing as them if you're going for a tall Japan playthrough. Takeda. Takeda is another landlocked daimyo with 2k troops. Its national ideas are pretty balanced, some really good ones being in there. You will be able to easily conquer two of your four neighbors, but after that you might struggle. They will also be pretty decent for a tall Japan, the goods produced and idea cost national ideas. Satake. Satake is actually a pretty decent daimyo, but it is still C tier because there are so many better ones. Its starting traditions of plus 25% land force limit is OP, but after that, 
the ideas bounce out with some good and some bad ones. If you do play as them, focus on conquering the north first before trying to move down south. Amago. Amago is the strongest daimyo in this tier. In fact, I even put them in B tier at one point, but I realized that there are many stronger daimyos. Their real strength comes from their level 3 fort and pretty good primary military focused national ideas, as well as their iron producing province. Another reason why they are in this tier is that it is very difficult to expand as them with two much stronger nations in Hosokawa and Yamana bordering you, and you probably won't have much luck in trying to launch a naval invasion against other daimyos. If you got in this far and are enjoying this video, consider leaving a like and subscribing. It helps out a lot. B tier. Now we really start getting into strong daimyo territory. This is the tier where you can seriously start considering these nations for playthroughs and serious campaigns in order to get some achievements, whatever you like to do to have fun. Honestly, you can pretty easily conquer all of it from Japan with any of these nations in about 25 to 30 years. Ando. We start off this tier list with Ando, a two province daimyo in the far north of Japan. Ando's ideas are mostly trade focused and they have a starting tradition of minus 20% transport cost. Now that's not something you don't see every day. Anyways, it makes up for its lackluster national ideas with the fact that it starts with two provinces and can very easily conquer all of Ainu quickly. After that, your development is more than double and you can focus on moving south. Shimazu. Moving from the far north to the far south, we have Shimasu, a nation with a pretty good set of national ideas that are a mix of military and economy focuses. Its starting traditions of plus 10% infantry combat ability should give you the edge over the neighbors and help you conquer them quickly. Remember to build up your navy though, as crossing the straits will be difficult against the navies of multiple enemies. So, So is a unique daimyo with it being the only one that starts on an island, the island of Tsushima. Their national ideas are exclusively focused on navy, trade, and most importantly, piracy. So is the only nation in the Japanese region to not be able to use the Sengoku CB because it has no land connection to any other daimyo. So will have to fabricate a claim on the much stronger Oichi. But that's not all. The small island nation has an event which actually become a pirate republic, I recommend being one and afterwards raiding the coast of all of Eastern Asia. This nation definitely provides a unique way of playing in the region, Oichi. Oichi is the nation that we just mentioned. They are located just across the sea from So. They start off with two provinces, both of which are centers of trade. Level 1 and 2 respectively, and they produce chinaware with the potential to spawn coal and silk, both very powerful trade goods. Not only that, both provinces also have forts. This makes Oichi probably the best daimyo in 1444 economy wise, apart from the shogunate and out of Ashikaga. You should have no problem expanding as them. Only thing that's holding them back as a nation back in B tier is their very weak national ideas. If you do start as them, I recommend taking the Japanese ideas when you form Japan. Toki. Toki is a landlocked daimyo in the middle of Japan and starts with a level 3 fort, which is a huge deal in Japan. They start off with seven neighbors who are stronger than three or four of them. So you should have no problem in expanding. They have pretty good national ideas that are a mix of military and economy focuses, as well as a province that produces paper. The thing that's holding them back is their horrible 111 cool ruler and a lack of navy. Yugosuge. Banning from the east to west coast of Japan and dividing the largest island in half is a nation of Yugosuge. Yugosuge is the second largest nation in Japan, so it starts off with three provinces, one of which is a level 2 center of trade. This enables them to field an army of six regiments while going over their force limit. When playing as them, you should go north first and conquer everything before shifting your attention south. That is, Ashikaga has not asked for you to Senpoku due to expanding too rapidly. The thing that's holding the, this nation back in B tier is a lack of a good set of national ideas, even though it's the best daimyo 
in this tier. A tier. We arrive to A tier. This tier contains some of the strongest nations in Japan. You will easily conquer all other daimyos and form Japan in no time when playing as any of these nations. The reason they are not S tier is because they lack just a little something to get them to edge over the nations in S tier. Let's see which ones they are. Shiba. We start this tier off with Shiba. Not to get confused with Chiba. Shiba is a two province daimyo, but their provinces are not connected. This is the first thing you will probably focus on if you're playing as them. They start off with 3k troops and 6 ships, and their capital province produces paper, an excellent trade good. Shiba also has an excellent set of national ideas that are a mix of military and economy ideas. Only thing that might hold you back are some stronger neighbors, so it's important to get good alliances going before you start conquering. Hatakayama. Moving on, we have Shiba's neighbor, Hatakayama. They are another two province nation. The province is not connected, except they have a level 3 fort, which is a huge buff. Unlike Shiba though, you won't be focusing on connecting them since they are a strong nation in the game. So you will need to look forward for careful opportunities to expand. Hatakamiya has an excellent starting tradition that are plus 10% armor morale and plus 20% national manpower. So you will definitely have an upper hand in most wars. Just be careful when declaring them and make sure the Royal Mary improve relations with Ashikaga. They might feel threatened since you are so close to them. Ashikaga. Next in this tier list we have the Shogunate of Ashikaga. Of course, they start off in a really strong position. Being the Shogun and all, they have two provinces in Kyoto and Sagaami, which produce silk and iron, which are both very good. Now you may think that being the Shogun will put them in S tier, Actually, them being Shogun is the only reason why they are in A tier. Otherwise, they'll be in B or even C tier. This is due to the fact they have pretty bad national ideas, with literally none that give you good military modifiers. Plus, being the Shogun is honestly kind of boring. It's mostly waiting around the annex daimyos and getting declared on by Ming. They also start in a 1 1 1 regency, which will last for 7 years. Being a Shogun is not all that bad though. You could always do a Daimyo World Conquest, the most popular way to complete the three mountain achievement that Ryuku has, Yamana. Yamana is the strongest nation in this tier. They start off with four provinces, one of which is not connected to the other three, and another which produces iron. This makes them the joint biggest nation with Hosokawa. They also have a decent national idea set which focuses on diplomacy and military. Their real strength obviously comes from their size though. This along with pretty good set of national ideas put them at the top of the A tier. You should focus on taking over the south first and connecting your land before expanding north. They also have a pretty good starting ruler so hold on to them while you can. S tier. Finally we arrive at S tier. So congratulations to everyone that made it this far. In this tier, we have the strongest nations in Japan. By playing as any of these nations, you will quickly and explosively expand into all directions without paying attention to your economy, allies, aggressive expansion, and just shogunate. At least until you form Japan. If you start as any of these nations, do not take the Japanese traditions and ideas when you form it, as all these nations have superior national ideas. Let's see which ones they are. Tokugawa. Tokugawa is often overlooked by due to its neighbors, but make no mistake, this nation was one of the three daimyos which historically unified Japan. Tokugawa starts with 3k troops and 5 ships, and if you manage to defeat Oda quickly, you can start dominating the Japanese islands very quickly. Your excellent national ideas that focus on military and internal stability make Tokugawa an excellent choice when looking to form Japan. They have a really good 4-4-5 starting ruler and a decent 4-3-3 air too. Their ideas are suited for playing tall and playing wide as well. You will not make a mistake if you choose to play as them and you will be forming Japan in no time. Hosokawa The second best daimyo award goes to the nation of Hosokawa. 
They are the joint largest and most powerful nation on the islands at the start of the game, controlling four provinces with your capital being a China ware producing trade center. By playing as Hosokawa, you will have no real enemies due to the fact that you start with 5k troops and a land force limit of 7 and 9 ships too. The most out of anyone else except Ashikaga, which has 10. With Hosokawa, you will expand rapidly in all directions, no one being able to stop you. And you could easily unite Japan in 15 to 20 years. When you do, I recommend keeping the national ideas, which are a mix of army and navy ideas. Oda. Oda is a daimyo that's number one on the charts and number one in our hearts. A nation that is a player favorite among almost all EU4 players, which are looking to form Japan. After all, Oda Nobunaga is considered the first unifier of Japan, and he's present in the game too. Oda starts off with one province that produces dyes, 3k troops, and six ships. What really sets them apart is their insane set of national ideas. Starting off with plus 10% army morale and infantry combat ability, you'll be steamrolling over everyone. Just make sure to build over your force limit. No one cares about the economy until all other daimyos are gone. By playing as Oda, you'll be able to unite Japan in 10 to 15 years if you're very aggressive and 20 if you're playing regularly. When you do form Japan, do not take the traditions and ideas because like I said, Oda has some of the best national ideas in the game. If you never played in Japan, or if you played a hundred times in Japan, Oda is always the way to go. That was pretty much everything from the Japanese nations slash daimyo tier list. What are your favorite Japanese nation? Do you think Paradox should drop another update for Japan? What was your first Japan game like? Leave a comment below. As always, if you enjoyed this video, consider leaving a like and subscribing. Only 10% of you are subscribed, so it would really mean a lot. And join the Discord. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time for another E4 video.